Hey guys and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Pachala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and this video we are going to talk about oral radiology. So without further ado, let's get started. Friends and welcome back to on it our channel and this video we are going to talk about the biological effects of radiation and we are going to cover in three parts now I know that this topic is not that big but still I want to cover in three parts because first part we are going to cover the effects on the cell at the molecular level at the chemical level at the DNA level and the second part we are going to cover in the oral tissues. And the third part, we are going to cover the whole body. So in that, we are going to read the acute radiation syndrome. So that is how we are going to cover the biological effect of radiation in three parts. Now, it is very important for you to understand the first part. In order to understand the second part, I know that most of you guys will be like that, ma'am, the important part is the second part. Then why to watch the first part? Well, before starting with the biological effects on the tissues at the molecular level, let's first understand what you mean by radio sensitivity. Sensitivity means that, that we are sensitive to any specific thing, right? So suppose if you, uh, you have got sensitivity to, um, to any drug, sensitivity to anything, that means, that means this particular thing is going to affect you, right? So sensitive means that is the response which we are giving. Now, there is another thing which we call it the responsiveness. So, responsiveness is the response. See, radio sensitivity is basically the response of the cancer cells. Suppose radio sensitivity. That means on the radiation, if radiation is falling, these cells are going undergoing any change. So, that means these cells are radio sensitive. They are changing. They um, There is some change. They are undergoing any change due to radiation. Responsiveness is what change they are going. How quickly they are cha changing. How quickly they are giving a response after the radiation. That is the radio, uh, radio responsiveness. Now, resistance is. Resistance is how resistant they are. Suppose if radiation is coming, but this cell, this cell is not changing at all. So that is the radio resistance. That means the level of uh, this ionizing radiation to that organism which can withstand the radiation. That is the radio resistance. So now that we know what is radio, see, uh, let me tell you that the cells which you can multiply, the cells which has the potential to multiply, they are the most radio sensitive cells and the cells which cannot multiply like neural cells or like RBC, they, once they are formed, they cannot multiply, they, ha, they are very resistant. Once they, they are fully formed, once they are differentiated and then if they are not multiplying, they will not respond to the radiation. So somewhere, somewhere it is a good part, somewhere it is a bad part. How it is good? Suppose if they are not changing, that means whenever we are doing the, whenever any radiation is coming after any radionuclear war or if any radiation is coming because of any accidental radiation exposure. So on these tissues, there is no effect on the radiation. But the bad part is that if there is a tumor of that specific cell, then the radiation therapy won't, won't be possible to give, that it won't affect. So that is, uh, th these are the basic things. Now coming back to when the radiation is coming on to any tissue. What are the changes with that tissue is undergoing? What all are the changes which we can see at the cellular level? So if the radiation exposure is less than or equal to 10 raised to power minus 15 second. So, if this much radiation exposure, if this small radiation exposure is there, then only physical changes we will see. So, that is the physical stage. So, what all changes you will see that it is going to ionize the water. So, there is going to be formation of the ion, water ion. So, it is going to ionize the water 
and uh, there will be some excitation of the electron in the local track regions now coming to the next stage we have is when there is the radiation duration up to 10 raised to power minus 15 to 10 raised to power minus 12 second if this much of exposure is there then there are three initial responses which we see three initial species which we see three initial things that is one is our iron water iron right and OH and one more we see that is a our equi electron or H so what happens there is going to be this is the pre chemical stage this is not the chemical stage now this is the pre chemical stage chemical stages when we see that 10 raised to power minus 12 to 10 raised to power minus 6 second now here we see that all of these um, species they are either reacting uh, with H with one another or they are becoming widely separated in the particular part in the intra tract reaction now what happens when there is an exposure of 10 raised to power uh, less than or equal to 10 raised to power minus 3 second now the radical is formed with some biological molecule that is completed if it is 1 second now this was a very a less level now coming to if it is less than or equal to 1 second now the biochemical changes starts so there is going to be biochemical changes which occur now what happens if it occurs in some minutes if the radiation exposure is up to minutes then the cell division get affected all this we are going to study in time being don't worry about it and then what happens if the radiation day dose is up to days when the constantly up to days the radiation exposure is happening then the gi as well as the cns is affected when it is still weeks then there is the lung fibrosis because if it is still weeks that means it is in the air right so the lungs undergo fibrosis if it is in years now what happens like hiroshima nagasaki so there is going to be cataract there is going to be cancer and the genetic effects will be visible in the offspring so genetic there is going to be the dna changes in the dna that is going to affect the offsprings now we were talking about the ionization of the water let's just understand what happens if you remember the previous video where we have studied that there is the production of x-ray and we have studied that in the Compton effect if you remember we have studied that there is going to be ionization so there is ionization so what happens when this electron is coming when this I'm sorry this photon is coming so it is going to uh, throw this electron now this electron which he has thrown out of its outer shell when it is going to strike here so and some characteristic radiation is emitted so this electron is ionized now this ionized electron there can be two things one is this ionized electron when it can directly last video also we have studied this when it, it is going to directly hit the dna whenever it is coming from such a high speed that means when we are giving a very high radiation exposure high dose radiation exposure very high not high very high then there is going to be damage in the single strand now single standard is good for us it's not lethal when there is a double strand uh, dna damage then that there is a lethal exposure so it is directly going to hit the dna this is direct ionization indirect is when this electron will ionize the water so this ionized water is going to do the changes in the dna so the direct ionization we call it the direct effect so the direct effect contributes to one third of the biological effects of the exposed radiation exposure and two third of the effect is seen under the ionized water so two third of the biological effect is seen when there is a radiation exposure so what happens when both of these things happens so if there is direct and indirect so what happens it is going to impair the dna so there are going to be some biochemical changes so there are some biochemical changes which are seen now these biochemical changes 
they can either do the enzymatic repair or these biochemical changes are seen as under two effects one is the deterministic effect deterministic effect another one is the scotistic effect scotistic effect so deterministic effect that means if anything is determined to do something right as the name suggest determined that means when ever we see that there is a deterministic effect that means the severity is directly proportional to the dose that means once we give sup, suppose there are two things one is when you are giving when you are giving such a low radiation suppose you are taking x ray in the x ray room and uh, suppose uh, no 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 suppose if you are in the radiation room so if you are taking x ray of somebody and you are not behind the lead so there is very minimal x ray exposure right there is very minimal radiation exposure so that is below the threshold that is the sub threshold so in case of sub threshold exposure there is going to be no effect there is going to be no harm to our tissues right there is going to be no biological effects which are seen but what happens when there is a large dose when there is a dose which is above the threshold level then the severity is directly proportional to dose that means if we are giving a, a, a radiation of more dose that means there is going to be more severe effect so like if we talk about that above the threshold the amount of damage is directly proportional to the dose so that effect of radiation if we see the effect of radiation we have four things one is the dose see this is the effect of the radiation so we see one is dose second one is second one is dose rate so dose rate is the rate of exposure that means the rate at which we are giving the radiation suppose if i want if i want to give the radiation up to 3 gram or if i want to give up to 200 rads suppose if i want to give up to 200 rads so what i am going to do i am going to break it into small small pieces and i am going to give this radiation daily two times suppose if i am giving this 200 rads in 5 days uh, suppose i am giving in 20 days 20 days so i am going to give 10 rads per day that too i am giving twice daily that means i am giving 5 rads in one time so that is the rate right so that is uh, when it is given at a specific uh, when it is given at a specific time and the other scenario is when i am i am giving this 200 rad once once for all so at once when i am giving this 200 rad so actually what we see that higher the dose rate is so this is the higher dose rate right because the rate at which we are giving the dose is higher so that will cause more damage if we compare to giving 200 rads and breaking it into pieces so the what is i'm i'm trying to tell you is that higher the dose rate is the more damage it is going to cause on the tissues compared to the exposure of the same amount of the total exposure the amount is same but if i am giving at slow dose rate right so that was the dose rate third point is our oxygen so oxygen is if you remember we give hyperbaric oxygen therapy so this oxygen therapy what what is there in the hyperbaric oxygen therapy if you have seen they are like this chambers so these chamber are like you know below if you go below the 33 meters below the sea level so the at the pressure you see hyperbaric oxygen therapy you need to look at the term itself so as the name suggest hyperbaric hyper means hyper baric means a weight of atmosphere so whenever we are giving oxygen at higher atmospheric pressure that is somewhere around 33 mm uh, meters sorry 33 meters under the sea level the pressure the whatever pressure is there at that pressure we give this but this time we are giving see below that is 21% oxygen but now here what we are doing is we are giving it 100% oxygen 
so what we are going to do we are going to give this oxygen because you know what happens when there is a hypoxia when there is a hypoxia in the tissues now because because of this hypoxia these tissue are not going to react to the radiations in case of hypoxia because oxygen will break down into peroxide as well as hydrogen peroxide free radicals so in presence of oxygen what happens when the radiation is coming in presence of oxygen there are two products which are formed one is the hydrogen peroxide and another one is the hydroxyl peroxide free radical now what happens both of these are strong oxidizing agent and they are so reactive in damaging the biological tissues so we create this because if the cell is already in hypoxic condition then we give oxygen so that when we are giving the radiation therapy it is more effective so that the radiation therapy is going to kill the cells uh, because once we are giving the oxygen there are free radicals which are forming and thereby the damaging effect is enhanced right so this is the effect of the oxygen coming to the fourth point we have is the let which is our linear energy transfer what do you mean by linear energy transfer so linear energy transfer is basically the dose that is required to produce the biological effect the dose which is required to produce the biological effect now we have studied in the previous video the alpha particle if you remember the alpha particle they are uh, they are going to do the most damage so that means they have got higher let that is our linear energy transfer if the, the some particle which has which are uh, least harmful to the body that means they have got lower let so uh, they have got higher ionization density and they are more likely to produce uh, see i am talking about higher L, uh, higher let so when there is higher let that means there is going to be high ionization density that means they are going to do the double stranded dna damage when there is a double stranded dna damage i have told you that means that is the most lethal damage that means that is the most harmful damage and in case of lower uh, um, let is there in case of low linear energy transfer is there then there is a single stranded breakage that means there is less biological damage so what happens in the protein so protein changes their structure now coming to uh, before going uh, ahead let's discuss about stochastic effects so, so stochastic effect if you google it the meaning of the word stochastic stochastic means that any change which is occurring by chance right like by chance you have come across dental patshala so any change which is occurring by chance but may occur without a threshold dose so the probability is proportional to the dose but the severity is independent of the dose not understood so let me give you an example for this stochastic effect is suppose uh, like example i give you stochastically you came across dental patshala right that means accidentally you came across but only if only if you are studying then only you came across dental partial suppose if you you our, you are not a studious student suppose if you have no intention of studying that means you will not search anything related to dentistry that means you will never come across dental partial because you are studying because that is the reason that you came across dental partial so if any example one more example i'll give you suppose radiation induced cancer cancer which is due to radiation exposure so the exposure in this case increases the chances if radiation is there then only radiation induced cancer is there but it is not dependent on the severity of the radiation so radiation induced cancer we cannot tell that this much of radiation exposure is going to cause cancer but on the other hand the radiation will cause the cancer so the severity is not dependent so the severity is independent of the dose but the probability is proportional to the dose but the probability that you were studying that is the reason you came across the channel the probability of having the radiation exposure that is the reason you are developing the radiation induced cancer i mean not you 
but <laughs> that is the reason that radiation induced cancer is developed because the radiation exposure is there but we are not telling that this particular radiation exposure so that means stochastic effect is that stochastic effect is when it occurs by chance but it may occur without a threshold dose right suppose again i'll i'll just try to explain you one more time that you are not that studious student you have not you have not studied uh, the whole year now that one month before exam you are studying so you came across the channel to be particular so that means doesn't depend on the threshold dose that means the radiation induced cancer we are not telling any specific radiation we are not telling that above this radiation is going to be inducing cancer but we are just telling that because of the radiation radiation induced cancer can develop so that is when we are not talking about the dose but again but it there is the possibility that it may it is a possibility not it may it will occur because of the radiation right so that is the stochastic effect so coming to the other changes other biochemical changes right now that stochastic effect so come talking about other biochemical changes so what happens in the protein what happens in the protein there are two bonds which are broken down one is the hydrogen hydrogen bond one is one is the sulfide sulfide bond so what happens there is change in the secondary or change in the tertiary structure of the protein because of the disruption of the side chains or hydrogen bond or sulfide bond so the enzyme what happens when the enzyme is radiated when any radiation is this is my enzyme this was this is my enzyme okay so it is doing its effect now what happens when there is a radiation exposure when there is a radiation exposure when the enzyme is radiated the biological effects are amplified why because there is going to be inactivation of some certain enzyme because there is inactivation of the enzyme to convert into substrate now the substrate this enzyme is not forming the substrate right so protein denaturation can occur and enzyme inactivation can occur right so these are the effect on enzyme and protein talking about dna dna is more sensitive than rna if you see now dna there are certain changes which we see in the dna what are what are all the changes which we see in the dna now dna i have told you this is more radio sensitive that means the radiation is going to affect dna more than rna sensitive you understand the meaning sensitive right now so so radiation induced some changes are there first of all there can be any change or loss of a base right so there can be any change or loss of a base of the dna there can be disruption of hydrogen bonds between these dna strands right so there can be also disruption or discontinuation of these hydrogen bonds between the strands and also there can be a breakage of either or both the strand it again depend on the exposure radiation dose if high uh, and Uh, the single strand dna will cause less damage right also the cross linking of the dna strands now either uh, within the helical structure or to the other dna strand now single stranded dna as i've told you single strand breakage is there if so that require actually much higher dose to cause the cell death and if we look at the cell structure nucleus is most radio sensitive compared to the cytoplasm of the cell so nucleus is going to affect more because we know that it is going to actually going to change it is going to affect on the dna itself because we know this that it is are uh, definitely going to change uh, do some changes in the dna that is why the nucleus the most sensitive is the nucleus and in the nucleus we have got dna and chromosomes right so if we look at the cell cycle so the cell cycle is 
so starts from the the first phase in the cell cycle is our g1 phase right so g1 phase then we have got the s phase so then we this, this is the s phase is this is g1 gap stage then s stage is where the dna synthesis occur right we know that is the stage wherein dna synthesis occur so if any radiation exposure is there at this level when the dna is forming it is not going to affect more so this is the least sensitive stage now when the dna is formed now it is very harmful because it is going to go and interfere into the dna right so this is not good stage not good so this g2 is the most sensitive phase so starting from the g1 then s then g2 and then our mitosis m phase so the most sensitive is our g2 phase because here in the dna has formed and now it is going to break the arm of the dna either it is going to break the single arm or it is going to break the double arm now this radioactive material this uh, um, uh, radiation is going to show how powerful it is once the dna is formed right so either the one arm is broken usually one arm is broken at this stage before the dna is replicated that is if we talk about the g1 stage or s stage break in the both arms occur at the next mitosis that is there are some a uh, chromosome aberrations which we see so highest frequency of aberration in the chromosome we see at the g2 phase this is the most sensitive phase radio sensitive phase so because there are short intervals for the repair and this is prior to the mitosis happen so all the cells if you remember i have told you in the beginning all the cells that undergo cell division they are most sensitive cells so we see there are some abrasions in the chromosome that is suppose if earlier it was like this so now the chromosome has become ring like ring like or there can be translocation also so there can be translocation also guys we all know about translocation and all so suppose this was the previous now there can be the translocation which can occur also there can be tetracentric so these chromosome abrasions they are detected in the peripheral blood lymphocytes so there can be fragments dicentric or there can be ring chromosomes which can be seen cytoplasm on the other hand it requires a much higher dose to show changes in the cytoplasm but most frequently we see that changes in the nucleus especially at the dna in the g2 phase right and the plasma membrane there is increase uh, permeability to sodium potassium pump and we see that uh, because of the sodium potassium pump it get activated and there is a active transport which we see so there are going to be now you may find this scary but it is not scary at all so we are going to see the effects we are going to see the relationship between the radio sensitivity and different type of cells how this uh, what kind of cells are more radio sensitive what kind of cells are least radio sensitive so in order to see that first of all you need to understand three things one is if the cell is having highest mitotic rate that means that is the most radio sensitive cell so the most radio sensitive is going to have the first of all highest mitotic rate secondly it is not going to differentiate so whatever the precursor cell is there whatever the, whatever the primitive cell is there the cell suppose if he was like this okay what happens if this cells undergo differentiation and it transform into this kind of cell so <laughs> so if there is any transformation if there is any differentiation is there in the cell so that is the the uh, the differentiation will going to decrease the radio sensitivity 
so if the cell remains as it is even after period of time that means this cell which is not differentiated is going to be most radio sensitive cell but the cell which undergoes differentiation will not be most radio sensitive cell so the sensitivity is going to increase with the mitosis that means if the cells multiply into many cells if the cells has got the potential to multiply for example if we talk about basal cells we know that basal cells are basically the manufacturing house so they manufacture all the cells they have got higher mitotic rate the cells which has got higher mitotic rate are the most radio sensitive cells for example if i say arthroblastic cells right spermogenic cells so all spermatogenic cells so uh, that cells which are going to form the sperms so all these cells which have got the tendency to do the mitosis which has got the tendency to multiply are the most radio sensitive cells so the order of radio cells don't get scared of, of all this i'll just explain you so the order of radio sensitivity is going to decrease the most radio sensitive is going to number 1 least radio sensitive is going to number 5 now that you are understanding it will be easier for you to understand all of these types of cells so first thing we have studied if the cells is high have got high mitotic rate if the cells or in the future if the cell is undergoing any mitosis then also that will be radio sensitive cells or if the cell is not differentiating if the cell is same as the primitive cell like how the cell was formed it is same as it is like this so that also will increase the radio sensitivity now coming to all these types of cells look at the first one vegetative intermitotic cell vegetative means there is going to be mitosis there is uh, they will multiply at the fastest rate and inter mitotic cell inter mitotic cells means they are they are going to do the mitosis so these vegetative inter mitotic cells i have told you they are the most radio sensitive cell why because they divide regularly because they have mitotic future they do not the undergo differentiation between the mitosis whatever they are the, the all the cells which they are going to form will be same as it is they are not going to transform into anything else they are not going to differentiate into anything else they will remain as it is there is least differentiation which we see that is the reason that vegetative vegetative as you can see in the name itself it is the given intermitotic that means in between the mitotic that means these cell have got high mitosis rate so these cells that retain their primitive properties as it is right so uh, so what happens at the g2 phase of their cell cycle they are undergoing the radio sensitivity which we have studied already so what are the examples for this examples can be spermatogenic cells arthroblastic cells and the basal cell layer my dear friends basal cell layer of the mucous membrane so this is the reason that we will study that uh, mucositis occurs in the next stage when we are going to study next part when we are going to study the effect on the oral tissues that we will study mucous membrane effects coming to the second one differentiating see these cells are differentiating cells these cell are going to differentiate into some other kind of cell but still they have got the potential to divide so they will come under second number that is the reason they are still radio sensitive but they are not that radio sensitive compared to the vegetative because vegetative will remain as it is so differentiating are differentiating into some other kind of cells so there is little bit of differentiation which takes place compared to the primitive cells so these differentiating cells they are least radio sensitive compared to the vegetative one they often undergo uh, mitosis they often divide um, but there is a differentiation which is seen between the division 
right so the examples for this is the inner enamel epithelium of the developing tooth bud and also there are some more examples for this is the hematopoietic stem cells so they are undergoing differentiation also we have got uh, spermatocytes oocytes so these spermatocytes oocytes inner enamel epithelium all these comes under differentiating intermitotic because they multiply but they are going to undergo differentiation coming to the third one we have got multi potential connective tissue cells now these multi potential connective tissue cells they divide irregularly so whenever there is a demand then they are going to divide otherwise they are not going to divide right so all these fibroblast mesenchymal cells are the perfect example of the multipotent stem cells right so we know that these are the cells which are going to respond to mitosis under some demand so if the body requires there is a mitosis then they are going to divide in response to the demand so in case of adrenal cortex cartilage epithelium liver pancreas but still these cells also undergo some amount of uh, differentiation so coming to the fourth one is reverting post mitotic cells so post mitotic cells as we know that now these cells they are not going to divide so frequently so these are actually from here radio resistance words comes so r is there no so reverting cells they they are the actually radio resistant cells because they are not dividing that often they are actually very they divide very infrequently so they are all these cells which live for longer and they usually die before uh, they don't divide but they die like how we say marna manzoor hai right so they would rather die <laughs> instead of dividing so under some condition but they may divide under so these are these specialized cells which are the specialized cells the asthenar cells ductal cells of the salivary gland these are the reverting post mitotic cell coming to the last one of today's video is the fixed post mitotic cell so fixed post mitotic cells they will not divide no matter what happens they will not divide so these are the most resistant cells they are the most deed cells they are the most resistant cells stubborn cells so they will not divide they are highly differentiated cells cells so once they become mature they will not divide they are incapable of division they do not have the property to divide it only so these are the neuronal cells um, striated muscle cells squamous epithelial cells so all these cells we are talking about so guys this video covers the all the cellular level next video we are going to cover the radiation effects on the oral cavity radiation effects on the oral tissues i hope that you have enjoyed today's video so if you have enjoyed it give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below there is a link in the description box below to support me on patreon as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i'll see you soon in the next video